Good afternoon. My name is Brittany Tatum Robinson and I'm a doctoral student at the University of Louisiana at Monroe. This presentation will be a general overview of measure of validity. I hope that you find it informative and beneficial. First, I believe it is important to note the connection between reliability and validity. According to the authors of introductory statistics, reliability indicates the extent to which scores are consistent with one another and the extent to which the data are free from measurement error. A question you may pose is, are you getting the same results consistently? If you are getting the same results consistently, then your test is reliable. Validity is how well does an instrument measure what it is supposed to measure. A question you may pose is, how valid is this instrument for what I want to measure? For example, imagine you are measuring or analyzing the time of day your mail is delivered. The clock you are using is set 25 minutes fast. Is this method reliable? Well, of course, yes, this method is reliable because you are consistently recording a time at which your mail is delivered. Now ask yourself, is this measurement valid? Your response should be no because the clock is set at 25 minutes fast. So to recap all of that, is the test reliable? Yes, it's reliable because it's consistently giving you a time. Is the test valid? No, because the clock is set 25 minutes fast. Let's consider another example. Imagine you want to analyze the height of the women who attended the Oscars. As each woman walks the red carpet, you record their height using a height measurement scale. Is this method reliable? Yes, it's reliable because you are consistently recording the height of the women. Now ask yourself, is this method valid? Your response should be no, considering that most women wore heels to the event. Again, recapping, is the method reliable? Yes, it's reliable because you are consistently gathering the height of the women. Now is this measurement valid? No, because it did not take in consideration that most of the women wore heels. Now that we've discussed validity, let's discuss measurement briefly. Measurement is simply giving numerical value to what is being measured. Simply, measurement is just scores that provide evidence for validity. The authors of introductory statistics give varying levels of measurement. They include ratio, interval, ordinal, and nominal. As evident of the illustration, nominal measurements will be your weakest form of measurement, while ratios will be your strongest. Let's combine both validity and measurement and discuss our overall concept, which is measurement validity. According to the authors of introductory statistics, measurement validity is establishing evidence for the use of measure or instrument in a particular setting with a specific population for a given purpose. Measurement validity may also be referred to as test validity, score validity, or just simply validity. This is dependent upon what book you are using. In order for your measurement to provide validity, it first must be reliable. So it is important to note that there cannot be validity without reliability. You need reliability first in order for your measurement to be valid. There are multiple types of measures of validity that can be used as evidence to prove that your measurement is valid. You have construct validity, criterion validity, and content validity. I will briefly discuss and provide an example for each. 
Construct validity is just a test that measures what it claims to be measuring. For example, the Louisiana State Board of Education uses a LEAP assessment, the LEAP 2025 assessment, to measure the student proficiency level. So construct validity measures the proficiency level of the students who take this test. So again, construct validity is just measuring what it claims to measure. The LEAP assessment claims to measure the proficiency level of each student at any particular grade level. Criterion validity is the relationship between the criteria and the expected outcome. Simply put, does the test reflect certain abilities? Imagine you are in a statistics class and you want to predict the likelihood of student success on their final exam. If a student received passing grades on their midterm, their assignments, and their discussion boards, then this should reflect their ability to be successful on the final exam. So again, criterion validity is simply the reflection of the reflection of certain abilities. According to the authors of introductory statistics, content validity is whether the content that makes up the instrument is a reasonable representation of the concept that is attempting to measure. Some questions that you may ask yourself is does the test match or is it aligned with what is being measured? Does the instrument accurately represent the major aspects of the concept? And finally, does the instrument include material that is relevant? So let's look at our final example. The Praxis test is used to measure the knowledge of candidates who want to be teachers. Passing these exams is evidence that the individual acquires or possesses the knowledge needed to receive their license. So again, does the Praxis instrument include material that is relevant? Yes, it includes material that is relevant because the student, the student who is taking the test has to have the knowledge for the specific content areas in order to receive their license. So in summary, you have three different types of validity evidence. Construct validity measures what it claims to measure. The example I included was the state assessment and it measured the proficiency level of the students. Criterion validity is the relationship of abilities. The example I use was the ability of the students to pass their midterm, their assignments, and discussion boards, and this was an indicator that reflected their ability to pass the final exam for statistics. Content validity represents what is being measured. The example I provided was the, the praxis test, which is the knowledge of teaching. And the praxis test represents the knowledge, the knowledge individuals should have acquired in order to teach a specific content area. Because remember, the praxis test is broken down into elementary and secondary levels, and secondary even goes further and breaks their test down into the specific subject that you want to teach. In summary, validity is simply how well does an instrument measure what it is supposed to measure. And remember, there cannot be validity without reliability. Reliability, remember, is if the test is consistent. Validity is how well does it measure what it is supposed to measure. On this slide, you will find a list of sources I use for this presentation. Again, I hope this information was clear and informative. Any feedback, whether negative or positive, will be appreciated. 
Thank you for watching and good luck this semester.